I got 10 fresh tips and tricks for Tinkercad. How to delete part of the object in Tinkercad. 3D modeling in Tinkercad is simplified. All objects have two values. It can be solid or whole, like plus and minus. So if I have two solid objects like that, overlapping somehow, I select them both and group them then I will end up having kind of one object made of those two. But if one of those objects is set up as minus as the whole, like this, instead of having a group like that, I will use this minus object to delete part of that solid object. So take a look. And now we delete part of this object. So that's the simplify modeling way. We are not modifying certain nodes or faces, we're simply creating objects that are set up as the minus, as the whole, and then we can use those objects to cut out certain parts of another object, like here. Then we can position them, select both, and use the grouping tool at the top, and when you group plus and minus, the operation will happen, subtraction in this case, and the part of the object is missing now. All right, you can use it in very creative ways. Keep in mind, there are so many different shapes here, but you can go from basic shapes to even more advanced structures here, and all of those will still apply. So we can take a cylinder like that, and then we can have a sphere at the top of it, we can move that sphere down. We can select both of them. Don't forget to change the sphere into a hole. So we've got minus, group together. And this way we cut the top of the object. Take a look. All right, so that's how you can delete part of the object using another object. Tinkercad is a web-based app. So actually you don't need to install anything. Simply head to Tinkercad, create account or log into existing one and you are good to go. You will be in the project space after you create your very first project. But can we install this as a separate app? Yes and no. If you are a Chrome user, you can install something called Chrome app. Take a look here in the address bar, there's a little install icon. If you click on that, they will ask you that you want to install the Tinkercad app. If you click install, you will end up with the folder with all of your Chrome apps. So, for example, Adobe Express or YouTube or YouTube Music is also a Chrome app. So what does it mean that it's a Chrome app? The app will show as the separate icon in your system. If you open it up, it will open in the window like this without like the address bar for the web browser. So that's nice. But deep down, it's still a Chrome window. So you still need a Chrome browser to run this Chrome app, all right? But you got those benefits of having this in the separate window and you got a bit more space for the interface without the address bar. That's why it's a bit better because you will not close it by mistake while closing your browser, for example. And also you can see the icon in the like start bar or in the dog on Mac, you can see it as separate icon. And you can also turn it on, you can open the app from the from your apps area and just by clicking on the icon, you don't need to head to the website every single time. All right, so Tinkercad, you don't need to install anything, but if you want, you can install something called Chrome app to have it separately like that. Let me show you how you can move object up in Tinkercad. When you place objects on your artboard here, by default, they should stick to the floor level. When the object is selected, there is this black arrow, not the white node point that will change the height of the object. That's not what we need. We need to press on that black arrow here and this way you can pull it up from the ground level. You can also see the number here. This can be edited. And here it is. Again, select the object. Search for this black arrow. Keep in mind, it will also appear below the object if you want to pull it down below the ground then you will have the minus value, like minus seven in this case. So just click on the black arrow and pull it. And that's how you can lift objects up. When they are 
In the air, you can also see the, the casting the shadow to kind of help you out figure out where are they in the space. How can we add a different material properties to your 3D objects in Tinkercad? You will have to move from this basic design mode into the Simlab, the falling apple icon. All right, now select the object, click on it, and you will see two properties at the top, a color of it and the material. Take a look, by default, all objects are made from plastic, but we can change that, we can make it concrete, and now the properties of this object will change. We've got like friction, density, mass. So as a concrete, it's almost 12 kilograms. If I change it to something like uh, soft wood, it's only 676 grams, so not even one kilo, all right? So this can have a huge impact on your simulation. I got multiple, multiple bouncy rubber balls. Let's change one from bouncy rubber to steel, all right? And now let's play the simulation. I'm going to click play button. Okay, as you can see, those objects will behave based on the earth gravity and the different materials you gave them. So to adjust materials, you must move away from this design mode. We cannot see materials in design mode. Move it to Simlab and then you will see the texture on it. Like this is made of wood, this is made of rubber. You will see a texture of the given material on it. All right, so let's change this guy that fall down before into concrete block. Let's check that now the bouncy rubber can make it fall again. Yeah, it's fall down, but didn't slide out from the table. So we got already different result just by adjusting the material, the weight of different objects. All right, so that's a really, really nice addition in Tinkercad. So don't forget to always check what materials your objects are made of. You can control that in the Simlab simply by clicking on them and here. Let me show you how you can very quickly create a box like this one in Tinkercad. You will need to start with the cube, so drag it in. Then we can make it a bit lower, like that. If you want to have a bit rounded corners, you can check the properties of your box. There is something called radius at the very top. This will reach really round all of the corners. So you can consider doing that. Or keep it sharp like this. Then we need to make a copy of it. So Command C, Command V in my case, or simply copy at the top left and paste at the top left. Here's the perfect copy of it. We can now start by making this a bit higher. So I like to make it just a bit higher and instead of solid, we change to whole. All right, now we can see through this object and it's very important to make it a bit smaller than the original one. So I click on the corner and kind of drag it in, holding shift for proportion. All right, now I need to move it a bit up. So we still got the bottom part of the original box. Okay, now I select both, head to alignment, and we can align it to the center of this one, from this side and also from this side. Okay, looks good. Now the final touch will be to simply click the group icon at the top and then in that moment the whole object will kind of cut the hole into another object. And take a look, we got a proper box. We don't need to build it wall by wall. We got the bottom and all four walls of the box. If you wanna make adjustments to your box, you can always ungroup so we can break the group and then we can move this, we can make this even smaller and this way we can have thicker walls or we can add some roundness to it as well. And then again, we need to put it at the center of the another object. So we can do it manually or by using alignment tool as I did before. That's in my opinion, the easiest way. So select both alignment, click on the big object and then center and this side center as well. All right. And remember you need to group them together to get the actual whole actual box like this. How can we change backdrop color in Tinkercad? 
simply head to settings at the bottom right corner of your workspace. Then the very first thing on the list is the background color. By default it's a very bright gray color but we can change that or even use a custom color from here. As you may notice you can also switch off the grid lines and change the size of the floor you could say the workspace. So all of that is here then close the settings and as you may notice the backdrop outside the workspace is changed. But what if you want to change the color of the floor thing, the workspace itself? Head to simulation mode, so SimLab, the little falling up or icon at the top right. In this mode, we can select scene settings, and that's our ground, our workspace. By default, it's set up as this grid like structure, but we can change it to uh, any material you want, like plastic, and then set up the color for that plastic let's say yellow, all right? So that's a second thing we can change. Keep in mind, it's only in the scene lab mode. If I return back to design mode, it will be still this grid, but every time I go into simulation mode, it will be the correct color I set up. And the back, the back, we changed that before in settings here at the bottom right. Okay, we can always go back here, pick a new color, close settings and here's the new color. All right, so that's how you can change the color of the backdrop and also how we can change this floor properties. Unfortunately, it's only in the simulation lab here. How can we save the result of our simulation in Tinkercad as a nice video clip? So after you design your scene in design mode, you move to the scene lab here, the falling apple icon. The first thing was to play your simulation, all right? So you need to click the play button here at the bottom left or press spacebar on your keyboard. So play the simulation. All right, if you are happy with the result, you can stop it now. And now click share here at the top right, share. And you'll be able to export what we just saw as a video clip. We can play it again now. Here it is, that's our video clip. Now we can design about aspect ratio. All right, we can change the size. I suggest large, it's not really that large. And then we can still move the camera really if you wanna have a different angle. You can zoom in and out with your scroll on your mouse. All of those panning, zooming, rotating options are still here on the left. So get a nice angle, double check that everything is fine. And then you can click this create video button. It may take a moment to generate the whole video, especially if you selected the large format. And here it is. This is just a local video on my computer right now. How can we space object evenly in Tinkercad? Unfortunately, there's not like one special button for that, but there's a pretty good workaround. So first put your objects in your workplace. Then I suggest to click top here on this cube so we can get the proper top view and let's switch off the perspective for it. Just like that. Select all of your objects. We can start with the alignment. So I like to have them aligned in one plane. So I click alignment two at the top and I will align here. All right, that's a good start. How about distances now? We need even distances. We need to create additional object to help us out with it. So I'm going to drag in one more cube like this, and we're going to use it just to measure distances. So now it's time to scale it and decide how long the distance will be. We can type it here. Let's say I need exactly 26 millimeters. All right. So now I'm going to place this over here at my very first object and simply align the next object on another side. Then you move this blue one to make the distance, put the object here and one more time. After that you can delete that because this blue block is not necessary and we can always realign our object. So don't worry about it. If you move it up and down a bit, we can click alignment tool and realign them. And here it is. Let's go back to perspective. As you can see, I got a same distance between each of those cubes. 
So that's exactly what we need here. We got even distances. As I mentioned, there's not like one magic button for that, unfortunately, but I think using additional object as the distancing measurement tool and using the top view are pretty effective methods. How can we bevel edges on different 3D shapes in Tinkercad? When you simply drag and drop a shape, like this cylinder, you may notice there's a property here on the right side that allows us to move the slider to bevel this top and bottom edge of the cylinder, right? But some shapes may come without it. So if I just drag and drop simple cube like that, I got multiple different sliders, but I cannot really bevel edges here. Instead, they got radius that we can kind of round those edges around. So it all depends on the selected shapes. Some of them will allow you to bevel edges and some simply don't. And that's how it is managed here in Thinkicat. For example, this tube, this pipe-like shape, you can do that. And then you can also decide how many segments you would have there. So how complex is the geometry, how rounded it is. All right, so keep in mind that may slow down the simulation a bit, but it will give you smoother, smoother bevel because you've got more faces here on the way. In my case, six, seven, eight, go back to just one. All right, so you can do that here using the slider. Keep in mind, not all of the shapes supports that. To place your object exactly at the center of the workspace, you can check your settings first here at the bottom right to see what is the size of the workplace. That's 200 times 200 millimeters in my case. And by the way, here's the place when you can change your units. All right, so I need to place it at the center of it. Unfortunately, I cannot use my alignment tool as there's only one object here. So in that case, I suggest to just pull the ruler from the right here, pull it, and then make sure it's kind of stick outside the workspace at this very corner here. So align your ruler with the corner of your workspace like this. And we are using endpoints, not midpoints, endpoints. All right. And now, now when you move your object around, it will kind of show the position on the ruler. You don't need to do any extra step. The ruler is here and it will activate automatically. So remember we got 200 times 200 and now I just search for 100 times 100 point. That will be exactly the center of it. I can also override this here, 100, bam. All right, so my object here is exactly at the center of this art artwork here, my work plane. And I can even get rid of the ruler now because I don't need it anymore. All right, so that's one of multiple ways of putting the object at the center. You can do it manually by simply looking at the grid line below, or you can do it other way around. Maybe you don't need such a large Work plane. Maybe you change this to 50, 50 and take a look. That would be way easier to manage with the small work plane like that if you got only one single object to place. All right. I hope this was helpful. See you in the next one.